you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Swedish, but uh, still my, my heart is still in California and, and this and that. So, you, but, but, you know, it depends on the mood, of course. It depends on which side you wake up on in the morning. Am I sweet? Am I American? Am I Spain? Svenska Kocken tells the story of a small town Swedish chef that finds himself at the heart of the entertainment industry in 70s LA. Through no fault of his own, other than being who he is and following a minor failed TV appearance, he found that many of those both close to him and far had come to believe that he was the inspiration for one of television's most famous characters, the Swedish chef. For those of you unfamiliar, the Swedish chef is a Muppet character that first appeared on The Muppet Show in 1975 and went on to have a long, successful career on television, entertaining millions of children across the planet. He was originally performed by Jim Henson and Frank Oz. His best known phrase is Bork, Bork, Bork. Bork, Bork, Bork. The following pilot film aims to clarify the circumstances leading up to and resulting from his experiences living and working in LA. What was it that led so many to believe and Muppets show head writer Jerry Jewell to publicly deny the chef being the inspiration for the Muppets character, the Swedish chef? Swedes generally have a negative impression of the Swedish chef stemming from the fact that, to Swedes, his gibberish speech sounds very little like Swedish. Well, it's, it started in, in California, but N nobody kind of talked about it. Everybody said it's got well, you you got to be the format for the Swedish chef. They said, well, you know, nobody believed that and so forth, because it was never confirmed that I was the you know, the, because they moved everything from from 20th Century Fox over to London, the studio in London, the, the Jim Henson and the Muppet Show, and and uh, I said no 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 no, they, they couldn't be, and and then everybody, when I came back here. Most of my friends have seen the Muppet Show. They said, it's got to be you. You look like you. You know, I had long... When they were shooting the, the Muppet Show at 20th Century Fox, I had long hair down, almost down to here, and my mustache was red, reddish, and my sideburn was kind of reddish, you know? And I said, I look like a freaking Muppet. Hier am Siljansee, irgendwo in der Mitte von Schweden, kennt Lars Beckmann jedes Kind. My name is Lars Oki Backman. My nickname is Kuprik. K-U-P-R-I-K. Kuprik. That name came from early school days. They had a, a, the horseman, the chili mix, the blah blah blah, the hoody booty booty booty. But I was going to do a cup. I mean, I smash and grab thing and get very rich. Cup reek. Cup reek. Cup reek. <laughs> My crazy uncle David, which was a really uh, uh, cowboy and uh, discovering man, he was traveling all over the world. So he called me when I was working at the airport down south in Malmö and said, Lars, get your freaking ass over here. They need a chef at the Viking Horn. Friend of mine opened a restaurant in Beverly Hills. Everybody called it the Horny Viking, of course. And uh, so uh, I, I walked into my boss at the airport and said, you know, my uncle just called and he offered me a job in Los Angeles. Take it, he says, take it. I don't have any money. I didn't have any money. I lived in a little dinky apartment. I had my bed there and my kitchen here. That's how big it was. And so he says, I have blue. I have a little, I'll help you. And uh, uh, then I called my uncle up, up and I said, uh, I'll be here as soon as possible. So three days after the phone call, I left. Like you see in the pictures there, I cook in front of people yeah. with a big skillet and uh, stuff like that. This is the menu for 20th Century Fox that me and the pantry lady wrote for many years ago. 
that's how I, I do my hot dogs. And we, we keep our sausage warm here, you know. <laughs> I never, I never seen anything so big in my whole life. I, you know, flying into LA, look, wow, and wow, and wow, everywhere. You know, it, it's like you be, it's like you're flying over the town ev forever until you get to the airport, and you see planes going down on each side of you, and you know, I said, well, wait a minute, what the hell is this? Yeah, I never been. I mean, I've been to Germany. That's as far as I've been. I heard about the United States, of course, through my uncle. I didn't know very much about. Uh, I didn't know uh, about California. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know much at all about United States. It's big. The kitchen was terrible. When you get there in the morning, you turn the lights on and you had a baseball tray inside the door, and you go dong dong to scare the cockroaches away. It was kakalakas everywhere. You could hear them. The Viking Horn, I was there for five years. The 20th Century Fox, uh, I started there in 1975. Well, it's hard to remember, you're not getting old. But uh, the reason I started there was I worked for Holiday Inn in Westwood. And we had the Swedish, uh, the Scandinavian uh, Hollywood Club. The, there was an old uh, a bunch of guys and girls from from the Scandinavian countries, you know, so got together once a month and had uh, uh, sale and snaps and and uh, luncheon, you know, and they drank and they got drunk and they had a lot of fun. <laughs> And there was a guy from Denmark, his name was Mr. Hansen. Mr. Hansen, he was the, the uh, chef for the uh, commissary at the 20th century folks. So he wanted me to come up there and uh, take a look at it and I, uh, I was up one, one week and the next week I started working. There were 24 Mexicans, one American, one Swede, that was me, and one Danish. The Danish girl was speaking Danish, I was speaking Swedish just for fun, you know, nobody could understand us. And the American guy got mad because we were speaking Scandinavian countries, languages, and the Mexican guy was Hijolas, you gotta speak no comprende nada! Hijolas, jefe, por favor! So they didn't understand. So we had a lot of fun. Like we, we threw pots and pans uh, back and forth and this and that and so forth, uh, which they 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 uh, picked up at the Muppet Show, of course. <laughs> One reason for the show's popularity is that its humor is truly universal. The Swedish chef, for example, who speaks no known language, has a particular way of preparing a rather unsporting chicken in a basket. <laughs> With that time you couldn't bring a, a camera, not on the studios when you were working there, but I had a friend with me, he was there visiting me, and he had a camera in his pocket. So he took a picture, and I'm standing there with a big chef hat on going, this is Gravad Lux, you know. <laughs> I was standing up on my balcony down in the uh, Marina del Rey, looking down to the pool. You had a perfect view over the girls here. Look at that. Here's my balcony rail, and you can see all the girls lying here. There's the swimming pool, and here's the channel coming from the oceans out here. All the boats coming in here. Here's the bar. My bar in Santa Monica, my bar in Santa Monica. I love that bar. You know, I could sit there and get absolutely very, very funny in the end of the day, so to speak. <laughs> Kurt Eagle had talked to some uh, people that was coming into the Viking Horn for lunch every day and said, you want some free time on television? Kurt, I can get you in there for four or five minutes. He says, yeah, 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 yeah that, that would be nice, yeah, yeah. So we got in there at eight o'clock in the morning, I set it up, I had, we couldn't have any, any hot food 
uh, cooking. So I had made some meatballs, I made some, some uh, salmon, a, a whole post salmon and, and on a silver platter I had my pastry bag with mayonnaise and I had cut some cucumbers, uh, half some, you know, and uh, blah 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 blah. I was going to decorate the salmon. And they, what I didn't know was the, 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 the studio people have told Mr. Regis Philbin that you don't have to come out, we start out with the chef and he's going to say this is the Swedish salmon and then continue from there. He take care of himself out there on the stage. They didn't tell me about that. <laughs> and I didn't know they were going to let people in the goddamn thing. It was like 50, 60 people. And I thought, oh my God, there's a lot of people. And the studio man came with the, with the earphones on and count five, four, three, two, one. Lars, your live television, Hollywood speed, rolling lights. Dang. And I'm standing there like this with a freaking goddamn pastry bag and go, I went, the sad, the sad. I couldn't speak English or Swedish. I was just, I, and the sweat. I mean, you know, I, I said, oh my God, Mama, I want to go home. <laughs> and it was like three and a half, four minutes. I mean, an eternity to me. They couldn't understand the freaking thing. And that's that's what they say it is, the Swedish chef. But everybody said they took that thing on 20th century folks. Yeah, 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 I took it from you because I had long hair like this. Now here, you know, the mustache was red. And of course you need those, those uh, sideburns they all had by that time. That's where it is. Now I don't have anything left. <laughs> Jim Henson designing this morning. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Kathleen. Now, are you sketching ideas of uh, future Muppets? Oh, uh, sort of, although I was really just trying to stay busy to make it look like I was doing something here for you guys. <laughs> I don't, actually, I don't, des I, I, I do rough sketches, but uh, I have a couple of designers that are working with me that are so much better than I am that I don't design the characters very much anymore. Jim Henson moved the whole uh, uh, moving company or his company that made the, the, the Muppet Show moved it over to England because they have a, the, a better technique uh, you could see the dolls and you also can stand you could stand next to a doll and you were the same height and then uh, the Muppet Show started rolling along and, and people said God Lars have you seen the no I don't look at I don't, I don't look at no goddamn kids show I said you yeah. And they said, Lars, I think that uh, you look like you and the Muppet Show. No, 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 no. Have you seen it? No, no, I don't. I don't watch no goddamn kids show. I said, you know, and the Muppets. The Muppet Show brought Jim Henson's creations to 100 countries, and 235 million viewers were enthralled by one of the greatest love stories ever told. And Kermit was not the only male. To I heard it from the 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 crew and the uh, some people that work with the show and said. I, I am pretty sure, I said, Jim Hansen took it from what he saw in your kitchen up there. You were screaming and hollering, and, and then half Swedish, half Mexican, and a little bit of English, you know, in a mix. Actually, I can't say to 100 million percent that, I, uh, but I. As far as I know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> but uh, we've had total freedom to do it. There's, yeah. an, there's an incredible amount of freedom in writing a show like this, be just from from that point of view and from an artistic point of view as well. You know, because you, you can sit down and, and and type almost any insane fantasy you can think of on paper, and um, there are people standing by to do it. Bertil, my stepdad, he called me and said, uh, Margareta is sick. I uh, said, how bad is it? Well, I really don't know. Then he called me about a week later and said, uh, she's in the hospital. So I decided to, um, you know, I don't have any brothers and sisters, so I decided to, uh, to go home. 
I quit my job and, and uh, went back to uh, Stockholm. The show, the Muppet show was really big in Sweden though, when I got back here. People were <laughs> saying, that's you, that's you. Then when I had the, bought the hotel, the little hotel down the ski slope in Redfig, I, um, I started catering. I, I put an ad on the paper and said, you can also order catering. And it became more and more and more. It was a, it was a, it was a spin-off effect, you know. I started a catering business, a Capri Catering, and I've been doing it ever since, for over 25 years. Svenska kocken is, uh, Svenska kocken. The Swedish chef is cooking. Right now. And my niche is that I sing a little bit, you know, uh, like the putti putti gun e hana e e e a we a kogumi mana e. I made my own uh, lyrics because I can't speak Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I tell stories and, and we cook right in front of the people. That's my, my thing. And they've been very good. And they have took me from here to there and everywhere, to, uh, uh, all the way to Canada, to, to Calgary. But it's fun. I meet a lot of people. Uh, and you know, they've been a, they, 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 they spread these rumors all over the world. Yeah, I'm mean, sending my posters to all kinds of uh, places all around. You know, the last seven years, seven winters, I've been down in Spain for two months or three months, uh, you know, so, uh, so I haven't been working winter time. But summertime, I want to work this summer and I have bookings, not many, but enough to get a little play money, you know, play money, see? That's good, that's good, gotta have that. Oh yeah, I was on the yeah, I was on the way back uh, many times, but I didn't find I didn't, I didn't find anything that I wanted to do. I I had a vision that uh, I'm going over there, open a little small restaurant, me and s some other good chef. So I, so I didn't find anything. I, I, well, I looked, but I, maybe I didn't look hard enough. I, I don't know. But I said, man, it could be nice to be in Sweden too, because. LA is LA. LA is too much. Nine days a week, almost. Sometimes it feels like that. I mean, people, 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 people. You can't go to the goddamn bathroom. The people, the 16 in line, bank, 200 in line, gas station, 20 cars in line, the, uh, 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 the car was 20 people in line. I mean, there is lane every. You have to love people, cars, and smog to be living in LA. <coughs> on the church and on my, uh, the one with the hat on with my knife, a knife in my hand. I'm tired of cooking. I've been cooking for 52 years. Now it's that's enough. That's enough, right? You freaking freeloader. Pretty, pretty, a baby sugar fine. Another Swedish chef says, What's for dinner tonight, darling? Oh, today we're gonna put on, set on, you know, I'll put on the stove. No, no, I mean, you know, put a, a, a pot on the stove and a little bit of spaghetti, a little salt in the water. Pack the spaghetti in there, you know, open a can of to tomatoes and you add a little uh, meat, ground beef in the pan. You go chop, 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 chop. It's cooking now, it's two and a half minutes, it's three minutes. All right, the spaghetti is ready, cool it off, okay? And then uh, oh, there's the sauce. Twelve and a half minutes, your dinner is ready. You haven't even put the shirt on. Ah, <laughs> 
I wanna make a love to you. 